Welcome to the official Bona Sand and Finish video training series. By trusting Bona products, processes, and best practices, you can rest assured your jobs will be completed quickly, efficiently, and to the highest possible standards of quality in the industry. There are many different ways to sand and finish hardwood floors. Our focus in this video series and in everything we do at Bona is on best practices. We don't take shortcuts when we create products to optimize the beauty and performance of every floor, and neither should you when you're using them on the job site. Bona offers the most advanced sanding and finishing products in the world. For almost a century, we've shown our commitment and passion for hardwood floors by offering a comprehensive system of products specifically for the sand and finish process. By using the complete Bona system on all your jobs, you assure compatibility of products and the ultimate in performance. No one wants wood dust in their home, and unfortunately this isn't just a homeowner problem. A dirty, dusty job site affects your time, profits, and your reputation. It can also be a health hazard for you, the contractor, and all your on-site employees. Bona pioneered dust containment technology and is currently the world leader in dust containment systems, from portable backvacs to the ultimate atomic trailer system. For more than 35 years, Bona has been the world leader in waterborne finishing technology. Contractors and homeowners alike prefer these finishes because they're fast drying, low odor, and don't discolor over time. They're also more environmentally friendly than their solvent-based counterparts. Bona Mega and Bona Traffic, our most popular waterborne finishes, have covered more than 3.5 billion square feet of hardwood floors all over the world since their inception in the 1990s. Of course, you want your customers to love their newly sanded and finished hardwood floors. But you also want to empower them with the knowledge and tools to protect their beautiful wood floor investment well into the future. Thankfully, Bona provides a wealth of valuable information and products to help you do just that. Now, let's get ready to sand and finish using the full Bona system. Always wear safety glasses and earplugs when working with sanding equipment and vacuums. Flying debris and abrasive grit can cause permanent eye damage in a split second, and hearing loss is a common condition in the wood floor industry. Whenever possible, unplug machines before adjusting in order to prevent accidental startup. Keep your hands and any loose clothing away from all moving parts. Sanding and finishing wood floors can create an explosive environment, so always keep your work area well ventilated. Avoid hitting nails or other metal when sanding, as sparks can create an explosion or fire in your sanding bag or vacuum. Properly dispose of all dust on a daily basis, and remember that most fires do not occur immediately. The key to a good sanding job is correct preparation of the machines and the job site itself. One machine out of adjustment or poor job site prep can cost unnecessary man hours and lost profits. Always make sure you have the right 220 volt plugs for powering the belt sander. It's a good idea to carry a few different three and four wire pigtails with you. Typically, you'll find 220 volt outlets behind the clothes dryer or stove, or it may be necessary to have an electrician wire you directly into the breaker box. With the Bona Power Station Plus, a four wire outlet is required for complete functionality. Be sure to give yourself enough cord length to reach the entire work area. No matter what electrical setup you decide on, always make sure the entire system is properly grounded on a breaker. This includes all 220 and 110 volt cords and plugs. Controlling the internal job site temperature, airflow, and humidity is very important to a successful sand and finish job. You must know where the controls are, how they work, and have an agreement with the homeowner beforehand about desired settings. In-floor air registers and cold air returns must be covered or blocked to prevent sanding dust and other debris from entering the HVAC system, or from anything being blown out of a vent onto wet finish. Be sure to check all other sources of gusty airflow such as doors and windows and manage them as necessary to ensure proper dust containment.
The trim work on any job site must be either removed and replaced or left up and protected. If the trim work is left in place, cover the baseboards with blue tape to protect them from scrapes and scratches or prep the contact points on your sanding equipment. Nails and staples left over from carpet tack strips, floor repairs and other work can be difficult to see and can badly damage your sanding equipment. A damaged drum on a belt sander will leave trails in the floor and a bad impression on your customer. A good way to find these pesky obstructions is to turn over a push broom and run it over the floor. A bone mop can also be a good tool for this task as the flat base and or microfiber pad will catch on nails, staples and splinters from damaged boards. Remove, set or repair any issues you find. Damaged areas such as broken boards, pet urine stains or water stains can be extremely difficult if not impossible to remove with just the sanding process. These areas, as well as any deep gouges, nail holes, and other major surface damage, should be repaired or replaced prior to sanding the floor. You'll also want to double check the sandable wear layer of the flooring before you start. This can often be done by observing the wear layer on the side of the air vent openings, in the expansion gap around the baseboards, or by sliding a thin card in between the board seams. Prior to your arrival, the homeowner should have removed all wall hangings including art, photographs, decorative items, mirrors, and bookshelves. You may also want to address window treatments, especially drapes and blinds that are in close proximity to the floor. While the effort and liability of moving large appliances is up to the business practice of the contractor, we often provide this service, especially if necessary, in order to access the power supply and to avoid pre- or post-floor damage by furniture movers who might not care about the floor like we do. An air sled, furniture dolly, or other specialized tools can be a great help to safely move large, unwieldy appliances without damaging the floor, the finish, or your back. Sanding a floor is labor-intensive work, and to a homeowner can seem like a dirty job. To alleviate these worries and maximize efficiency and professionalism on every job site, Always make sure to have clean, well-running machines that help you create the ideal surface for stain and finish application. Clean machines and a clean process make a huge impression on the homeowner and help set you apart from the competition. The Bona Portable DCS is not just another job site vacuum. It was specifically designed and engineered to work with hardwood floor sanding machines like belt sanders, edgers, and buffers. It delivers the optimal combination of airflow and water lift for superior suction power and airborne dust control. Even though we cleaned and prepped our portable DCS vacuum after the last job, along with all our other equipment, we'll want to give it the once over to make sure it's ready to go for this job. Check the coarse filter and HEPA filter for damage and cleanliness. Clean or replace if necessary. Open the canister and check the Longo pack setup, bag ties, and the bottom filter pad. Finally, vacuum and wipe down the inside of the canister and outside of the vacuum unit. Check hoses and cuff connectors, then securely attach to the vac inlet. Check the power cord for any damage and make sure the grounding plug is intact. Repair or replace if necessary. Plug the unit into the appropriate power source. Your portable DCS is now ready to go. Bona belt sanders are designed to offer the ultimate in power and finesse. We understand that you're not just grinding finish off the floor, you're creating a fresh new surface to ensure the beauty and durability of the finishing system. As with the DCS, we'll want to double check the key components on our Bona belt sander to ensure that it's ready to perform on this job. Make sure that the machine's tires are clean and free from debris that could cause uneven operation and transfer marks onto the floor. Also check the drum and travel roller for any damage and buildup missed after the last job. Quickly inspect the rest of the sander and clean or make adjustments as needed. For safety and smooth operation, check the machine's power cable for any damage such as cuts, abrasions, and exposed wire. Check plug connections to make sure they're secure. If there is damage, repair or replace the cord or plugs before use. Wood dust, pitch, and resin can build up on the drum, travel roller, and other internal mechanisms, including fan blades. Clean off all of these areas with a vacuum or compressed air. A solvent may be necessary to remove pitch and resin buildup. 
Also, be sure to check the drum for any other damage, such as chips or uneven wear. Improperly adjusted drive belts are the main culprit of machine-caused chatter when sanding floors, so making sure your belts are correctly tensioned is crucial to a quality sanding job. Drive belts should be adjusted to about a quarter inch flex. Adjust the drum belt first, then the fan belt. With the machine running, check for smoothness by looking at the belts from the side at floor level. Since all belts stretch with use and age, it's best to check belt tensions on every job. Proper voltage and amperage is the lifeblood of your machines. Always perform an electrical check before running any machine at a new job site. For your safety and the machines, double check to make sure the cable and sander are grounded and on a breaker. This will ensure that if you suddenly become the ground due to an electrical short or moisture issues, power will cut off immediately. Using a voltmeter, check the incoming voltage from your power source. Run the necessary length of cable for the job and measure the output at the end of the plug. The plug going into the machine should read as close to 230 volts as possible for correct and smooth operation. Longer cable runs of 100 feet or more will drop voltage over the length of the cable, which causes machines to run hot and shortens motor life. This loss in power can also cause chatter as the machine surges. Some job sites have too much voltage, which is equally as harmful to your sander due to excess heat. For long cable runs over 100 feet, use the Bono Power Station Plus on the last 50 feet of cable. For example, if you need 200 feet of cable, run 150 feet from the power source to the power station, and 50 feet from the power station to your machine. The extra 110 volt outlets on the front of the Power Station Plus can be used to power edgers, vacuums, and other tools such as lights and palm sanders. After the electrical check, connect the 2-inch hose cuffs to the sander dust tube and secure it with a 2-inch power clamp. This will prevent the cuff from accidentally being pulled off during operation. String the power cable through the cord holder and connect it to the inlet receptacle. Use Velcro straps to securely connect the DCS hose and power cable. This helps to keep the hose and cable out of your way, organizes your work area, and makes it easier to avoid running over the power cable with the sander, which can be a very dangerous situation. Based on the condition of the existing floor, estimate which abrasive belt grit you'll need for the initial sanding pass. Remember that the goal of the first cut on a resand job is to remove all of the old finished sealer and stain. On a new install, the goal is to remove all of the over and under wood and to flatten the floor. With the sanding machine unplugged, place the new abrasive belt on the machine by first lowering the travel roller tension lever. Carefully slide the belt under the drum and over the travel roller until it is fully inserted. Leaving the door open, raise the tension lever. Turn the machine on and observe the tracking of the abrasive belt along the bottom of the drum. You'll want the belt to slightly overlap the drum so the drum itself never touches the floor. Adjust the tracking if needed according to the directions of your specific machine. For the first cut, set the drum pressure to the heaviest setting, again according to the directions for your particular sanding machine. We want to ensure a stable, aggressive cut on newly installed wood floors, and remove all old stain and finish on resand jobs. Add extra weight if the option is available for your machine. Since sanding drums can get bumped out of position during handling and travel, we need to check that the drum is set flat and not cutting harder on one side or the other. To do this, first turn on your DCS vac. With the sander running, lightly touch the drum to the flooring surface and raise the handle immediately. Check the resulting drum mark for uniformity across the pattern. If necessary, adjust the drum until the test shows an even mark. On large jobs, a waist belt can reduce upper body fatigue while operating the belt sander. Adjust it for a snug but comfortable fit and attach the quick release snap to the eyelet on the rear of the machine. Check the power cable for any damage and make sure the grounding plug is intact. Replace it if necessary. With the edger turned off and unplugged, turn it over and check the drive plate for flatness. To do this, spin the plate and observe it from the side. Look for any other damage to the drive plate and check the condition of the quick change Velcro. 
Based on the condition of the floor, estimate which edger disc abrasive grit you'll most likely have to start with. Most often, you won't need your edger disc grit to be quite as aggressive as your sanding belt. For example, you might use a 36 grit belt, but start with a 50 grit edger disc. Carefully center the disc over the drive plate and securely press it onto the Velcro surface to mount it. If you're using bolt-on edger discs, remove the nut and washer from the mounting bolt in the center of the drive plate. Center the disc, slide it over the bolt, and hold it in place while replacing the washer and nut. Tighten the nut with the supplied key. While the machine is on its side, double check the edger's tires for buildup and debris. Clean if necessary, and then return the unit to an upright position. Connect the 1.5 inch hose cuff to the edger dust tube and secure it with a 1.5 inch power clamp. This will prevent accidental uncoupling of the cuff and tube during heavy use. Plug the edger into an appropriate 115 volt outlet and use Velcro straps to secure the DCS hose to the power cord. For proper use of the edger, you need to know precisely where and how aggressively the cut point is set. To check the edger's footprint or cut area, turn on your DCS and edger and then lightly touch the drive plate to the flooring surface and quickly raise it back up. Check the resulting edger mark for the set and depth of the cut. Ideally, we want the cut to be set between 1230 and 230 at the top right of the drive plate. This positioning optimizes dust pickup by throwing dust at the side brushes and into the throat of the vacuum. The depth of the cut should be around one inch, but it can also be narrowed for a more aggressive cut or widened for a flatter, smoother cut. You can change the set and depth of the cut by adjusting the height and angle of the chassis on the back wheels of the edger.